good to see you guys again, once again. Um, now we have done the arrival round. Um, uh, for the agenda for today is pretty simple. Uh, Knut is going to introduce, do the basic introduction, and then um, who is new and concerned art mentors, which I think um, Hans or some new people do not know about this. Uh, we'll actually see what it is. And then um, Lucas will tell us about the new functionalities that we have on the arc with regards to UI and uh, other core functionalities. And then we have the Q&A session. And then once again, we depart by saying bye-bye and how we, how we felt during the meeting. So on that note, I, I will hand over to Newt. Okay. Yeah, thank you, uh, Richard. Can you move forward the slides and you just continue? Is this okay? Yes. Yeah. So what we recap and what we should also recap just as a preparation to scale our better user calls, I hope that we're going to be more and more people in future. At least this is what it looks like now here in Vienna. Um, our pain points are nature disconnection and then the fragmentation of education for sustainable development. Uh, you can move to the next slide. Um, our project mission, therefore, is accelerate the impact of education for sustainable development, short also ESD, and empower educators and communities in the most decentralized possible way. Yep. And um, what is next? Next slide. Yeah, I wanted to share here also for those who have not seen it, a fragmentation example. So currently we have this office close to Vienna in Austria. And Austria is a nowadays probably very insignificant country on a global scale, very small, even 9 million people living here. But it is a very advanced society. Uh, Germany, Switzerland, and Austria are amongst the most wealthy uh, countries on the planet. And so there happens a lot of sustainability, um, let's just call it activities. And all over Austria, there are roughly 600 different organizations providing uh, education for sustainable development. Um, this is a super high fragmentation. Uh, a lot of those organizations are redundant. Some of them work against each other. So it's not at all very sustainable. Uh, and this proves why we need a platform like the ARC. This is just one tiny country. Um, we have the same situation all over the planet. Okay, next slide, please. Who is new? Um, I think we have this time only one new community on the ARC. Uh, next slide, please. It's Nökis. And uh, we don't even have it here. It's um, not yet handed over, but we have one new community, uh, uh, annual children's festival. We're going to hand over the ARC community to the organizers uh, on November 5th. So uh, let's jump directly to what's new. Uh, Lucas, floor is yours. All right. Uh, so uh, next, the next slide would be an overview, but maybe you don't need it. Yeah, I guess it's fine. So um, I'm going to share my screen with you. And uh, let's jump right in, uh, starting from uh, the Robin Hood and the Band of Long Stockings. Uh, we've got uh, some new functionalities on the community profile for uh, both members of communities and managers of communities. Then we have some new functionalities on the user profile in terms of uh, gamification, displaying people's progress. And uh, uh, we've got uh, new badges for uh, showing people's progress, people's uh, achievements on the platform. So let's get started. Um, if you are familiar with the interface, uh, you might notice that there are two new tabs on the top of the community profile in case you are the community mentor. And uh, the first tab is what you have seen before. That's uh, the profile itself, uh, the way that the users can see it, but uh, there is a new tab in here, bookings. And this tab holds uh, a very simple, so far, uh, panel, which shows all the bookings that have been made for uh, all events inside of your community. So uh, basically the problem was uh, 
for the current alpha and beta users that uh, if they wanted to have an overview of what's happening in their events, uh, they had to go to each event one by one. So we came up with a simple dashboard where you can see all the bookings that have been made, some basic information, you can click on them, so, uh, which takes you to the dashboard of the event where you can manipulate it further. And uh, if someone calls you and that they are looking for, uh, um, you need to look for their booking, you just need to ask them uh, the booking code and you can search using the booking code. Uh, next um, extension will be a search for more uh, fields, basically search for all the fields that you can see in here, but so far, it is done for the booking code. Um, it should be a big help if you are doing uh, a lot of events uh, like we said Shanghai and uh, you need to uh, quickly react to people who call you and they give you a booking code. Um, yeah, so uh, that's the first thing on um, uh, improvements for the community management. The second thing uh, that I wanted to show you is uh, notifications. So so far, uh, when somebody booked an event, booked for an activity, they get an email of a confirmation. Uh, but the organizing community, so the facilitators and uh, the people who take care of bookings in the communities were not notified about the new bookings. They have to check everything manually. So um, we came up with um, a notification email. Um, just once somebody books and pays or doesn't pay for a period of time, they get a notification email. And what I think is pretty cool, also get a, you can also get a chat message into your Element or Slack channel. So I'm gonna show you, uh, I'm gonna, on the left side, I'm gonna uh, book an event uh, as a user. And on the right side, I'm gonna receive the notification in uh, the element channel. Uh, so let's join. I'm going to get the child ticket because it's free for myself. And uh, I need to answer a question of a phone number. Confirm. And then I got the booking. And on the right side, you can see that there is a new booking on the arc in my community. And I get some basic information the activity name, the booking code, um, the buyer and the link profile, the price that it was paid and the status of the payment. Um, so in this way, uh, communities can get instant overview of um, what's happening. At the same time, uh, an email has landed into my mailbox, uh, which notifies me about this. The way this setup is that um, if the user, the uh, notification is sent as soon as the user pays. And if the user doesn't pay for two minutes, uh, then you get an unpaid new booking notification. This uh, later on will also be uh, configurable and we will adjust according to the people's feedback. Okay, there's one more thing that I wanted to show you on uh, the community profile. And um, we can again see it on the Robin Hood community. Um, we thought that uh, people might want to share more than just their address. So we added possibility to share a website, in this case, robinhood.com, uh, mailbox, so robin at hood.com, and a phone number. So in case you have a community on the art, I invite you to go to its settings and uh, scroll a bit down and you can see that you can enter the email, phone, and website. Cool. So uh, this is it for the community. You have the contact info, you have the bookings dashboard, and you have the notifications. Uh, and uh, let's have a look what is new in the user profile. You might have noticed uh, when uh, you were booking the new events. So uh, we've got a brand new way to display uh, your impact points. So we've thought we want to give more credit to people for their um, facilitation uh, score. And we want to also uh, show people's impact in a more cool way. We want to make it look like 
we want to make you want to grow their number. So we came up with this uh, circle diagram, which shows uh, what is your total number of impact points and uh, how many impact points, what is the percentage of impact points you get for facilitating events and what is the uh, percentage you get for participating in events. And uh, on the right side, you can see how much uh, trash you have collected in uh, in ARC activities. So this is the main KPI, this is the secondary KPI um, uh, next to each other. I will quickly show you how it looks like in the mobile view. Um, I think it looks actually even better uh, when it's centered one under each other. And then if you, as you click on uh, your impact, you get into the your impact page where it explains that for each hour spent in art activities, you gain 10 impact points and it gives you the overview and history of uh, where you got these impact points. So that's one thing. I'm gonna go back to my profile now. And uh, you might notice that uh, there are some new symbols on my profile picture. Uh, I've got a planet symbol in here and I've got a leaf on the right side. So uh, let's see uh, what, what that is. I'm gonna tap on my leaf and I can see that it's an impact tree. So I am currently uh, a popular level facilitator. Um, and it explains to me that on my way to guide people towards a more sustainable lifestyle, I gain impact points. And it invites me to celebrate my facilitation milestones with a new tree on my profile. So now everyone who will see my profile picture uh, across the platform will see that uh, I have already facilitated more than 10 hours of uh, uh, facilitation uh, of activities. Then on the left side, I've got a planet symbol and it's my impact planet. Uh, I am a harmonious Venus with uh, something between 300 and 1000 uh, impact points. And uh, the description in here is that on my way to learn about and restore the planet, I gain impact points. Celebrate your learning milestones with a new planetary symbol on your profile. So as uh, people gain more impact points, as you gain more impact points, you can uh, grow your identity and showcase it with a badge on your profile. And there is one more missing. I would invite you to go to your settings after the call and uh, set up uh, your date of birth because we also have spirit animals for everyone. So for new users, we will ask this information um, uh, on first login, but um, I will set up my birth date for uh, Jeff March 27 of uh, 1991 um, and update my profile. And as I go back, actually I need to reload here, I will get to know my spirit animal on the top of my profile picture. And I am a I am a, a strong bull, <laughs> in case you didn't know, <laughs> 21 and 35 years <laughs> old. Some, some participants in this call probably know. <laughs> so in each stage of life, you are accompanied by a spirit animal. Which one is your badge now? And uh, I would definitely invite you to set up uh, your birth date in your art profile and find out uh, what is your spirit animal. All right, well, that's it from what we wanted to share with you uh, today from the new functionality. There has been a start of new season for Green Steps. So we've been busy with uh, uh, making the platform smoother to use in China. Uh, we also did some improvements in speed uh, mainly for the Asia Pacific region and uh, yeah, in listening to feedbacks and implementing uh, small improvements one by one. Um, 
that's it from my side. And uh, yeah, I guess uh, we have some space for Q&A now. Yes. yes. Q&A. Any questions? Um, can I shoot the first question? Strange uh, uh, change of roles. Um, so you said that notifications are now sent by email. And in addition, Element and Slack. I think that's great. Um, however, uh, most people in China use WeChat. They would like to have a WeChat notification. And in the EU, I've noticed people now massively change to either Signal or Telegram. Um, so do you think it's possible to add this short message feature um, also on those three platforms or is it very, very complex and difficult? Um, so for, I think the most complex would be for WeChat because the ecosystem is quite close, but I do know that uh, you can have a WeChat board. Um, so this might be something uh, we could look into, uh, should be possible. For Telegram should be rather easy. Uh, I think you can do it pretty much as, as easy as we did for, for Element. But actually uh, what you can do for Element already now is that uh, you can bridge your uh, matrix element room uh, with a Telegram channel and uh, then you get the notification in Telegram as well. So there is definitely the Telegram possibility. Um, for WeChat, we have, yeah, for WeChat, I don't know. I, I know that there are WeChat bots, but it's definitely something to look into. Okay. Anybody else? Uh, for WeChat, I think there is a bot called WeChat D, like W E C H I T Y and seems to have quite active uh, online profile, but I never used it uh, myself, but maybe you might want to look into it. Cool. Yeah, I'm already searching. <laughs> Thanks, Hans. Uh, my, uh, my question is not actually a question, it's actually a contribution, uh, because uh, speaking from the Chinese, from the China team's point of view, it was actually a problem getting to getting to know the number of participants within an event. So the trigger of sending uh, messages to uh, Element and email is one actually a very good functionality because then it gives them an overview of the number of people who participate in a particular event on site before they actually plan to either cancel it or go along with it. So yeah, it's actually impressive. It's a nice thought. Um, I have a question. Since um you send notifications to the users that, okay, if you made a booking, what about if they made a booking, but they are yet to pay, is there any notification sent to them, email to remind them, okay, you need to make your payment or, or the booking, that kind of thing. I don't know if there's something like that. Yeah, so uh, if you uh, don't make a payment within two minutes, then uh, you get a, booking confirmation, but uh, saying that it's unpaid. And then five minutes later, you get a payment reminder. And there is still some uh, uh, spaces for improvement. Um, the Chinese team is asking for automatic canceling of bookings that are unpaid. And then we will adjust uh, the notifications also after this, is, uh, after this is done. Because we, of course, need to make a different uh, uh, policy for automatic cancellation for different forms of payment, like uh, uh, which had a, which had a uh, event should be automatically, a booking for an event which is only possible to pay online should be canceled maybe within 15 or 20 minutes. But uh, if it is a bank transfer, maybe it should be canceled only after two days. And if it is cash on arrival, then it should never be automatically cancelled, right? So we need to have a different um, template for each of these, these situations and also different uh, uh, policy uh, how the cancelling is going to happen. 
Yeah. Like it, could be two, it could be two milestones, no? It could be a first milestone if it's an online booking, um, then whatever, 15 minutes or 30 minutes after the booking has been, uh, and then a second milestone is just the start uh, of the event or like six hours before the event starts. So like two milestones would be uh, possible. Yeah, it's definitely um, a good thing to look into. Um, who else has a, a thought or the, an idea? What do you guys think about the badges? Oh, yes, that's a good one. I think uh, uh, it's wonderful. Yes, I think it's wonderful. Uh, I only have just one small uh, concern because uh, from the pictures that you show, uh, from the profile picture, once you get, imagine you get, a, if there are room, there's room in the future for a lot of pictures, a lot of like spirit animals, like uh, the planets, then it's going to actually cover your face. You won't be able to see your face. <laughs> That's just my quick What do you mean? It <laughs> means that you got a lot of badges. No, of course. <laughs> um, we also thought it uh, might be a bit busy. We still found it uh, okay like this. Be a good, uh, uh, let's say, center point for showing them. Uh, most people are actually going to have to, right? Uh, just uh, participation and uh, age and uh, then only facilitators which are minority group on on the platform we get all three of them and uh, of course maybe uh, we find a better way to, to show with them uh, this way that is covering uh, everybody's uh bro how to say precious uh profile picture yes uh, yeah <laughs> and we wanted to give it a prominent space Okay. Um, can I? Yes, please. Yeah, it would be, of course, much more important that somebody else shares, but um, I, I think they're pretty amazing. Uh, the badges, of course. Of course, I have to think that and I have to say that. But um, I, I have another question. Um, so if I set the date and I already have a profile, I tried that before. Um, what is the format? Because for me, it doesn't work. Whatever I edit in the calendar, I mean, it, it doesn't really work. So maybe um, maybe you can provide a format so that you know what you have to enter, like it is on a credit card. Um, because whatever I try to enter, 5-2-1976, whatever, it shows a completely different date afterwards. I think I'm a dragonfly now which I'm flattered about, of course, but uh, it's not the truth. Um, I want to be a dragon I want to stay high, high, high. Um, we don't hear what you say, Lucas. Sorry. Um, yeah, it's actually true that this date picker is not great for setting a year. Uh, so what you can do is you set them click a date and then just uh, replace uh, the year ah okay yeah so this is this is a kind of a, a tricky knowledge um i mean if, if i can't do it probably other people also will have a problem um it's just a usability remark right yeah we've got some work on on the date pickers being done now um, yeah, so and actually, I think that we wanted to uh, not to collect the whole birthday anyway, because a lot of people don't like to share and we don't need it. So we, we mm -hmm. might only be uh, collecting a month and a year or maybe only a year. Uh, and, and some people anyway going to do it fake, you know, because they want to be a dragonfly. They don't want to be a bull. Uh, <laughs> yeah, let's see. I, I put myself in my mom's age. And also, I can see that it's necessary to reload after the change. It's also something we need to get rid of. Um, but then now I'm a strong horse. No, sorry, creative horse. <laughs> Great. Yeah. Oh, that's the, the age bracket that I'm approaching very fast. I'm looking forward. 
I'm looking forward. Okay, great stuff. Um, yeah, I have something else on my mind. Um, actually, it's a functionality or an update that uh, we we didn't share. No, I mean you have a, a multilingual uh, landing page. Um, so maybe right. you also want to show that. Um, that's yeah. that's quite cool for for people, and there's going to be a lot of work uh, done also in the months to come. Yes. So there's maybe an information to share that we are now uh, getting better at uh, engaging more people um, from the beta users who are uh, willing to uh, help with some translation work. So, so far we've got the translation of the landing page into uh, Chinese and uh, German. So let's have a look at the Chinese. It was actually done by, by Sonia and uh, a friend of hers. So yeah, we've got also a Chinese version of this video, I believe. And uh, we're trying to make it uh, as localized as possible for all the countries uh, in which uh, we are present. And the German translation is new. I haven't seen it yet. yet. I don't, it's, not, uh, it's not finished. Uh, yeah, uh, that I, I put this actually already as a as a task for myself um, to review this, but um, also for Hans, pretty important. I mean, scaling, sharing about this project definitely starts with the landing page, um, and having it now in a multilingual setup is quite important. I'm really thinking about what should be really the next language, the fourth language, and believe it or not. My preliminary answer is Turkish. Um, we should really have it in Turkish and then maybe Arabic. Um, it's, it, those are under, undervalued uh, and very important languages in German speaking countries, definitely. <laughs> right. Yeah, so what's happening in this um, field as well. And uh, actually now, as we are having more people joining the work, um, we need to switch to some uh, tools for translation that uh, scale a bit better. So that's also um, a task for uh, the upcoming months to make the collaboration even easier uh, and uh, less coordination work on, on our shoulders. Yep. Okay. Um, any anything else? Any any other requests? Um, I mean, we have as an external participant today actually only Hans. So maybe we should also on not overstretch this. Um, and go back to um, um, the slides. Um, because I would like to also share with uh, Hans um, uh, something about the mentoring. Yeah, you can go actually to this slide. And um, so our objectives for this year, not for this year is still 10,000 learners. Um, what is also a new feature from the last beta call sharing is that you see now on the landing page, how many users there are. We have currently 1,200. Um, so we, we still need steep uh, scaling until the end of the year, but uh, you set objectives um, uh, to really be motivated. We still want to have 100 pro users. I don't know about that number. And uh, communities 100, we currently have 23, I think. Um, so next slide, please. Um, for the better users, the idea would be that uh, we have this phase until spring equinox. So from basically next week on another half year, uh, the better phase objectives are validation of the platform concept, confirm and improve ARC functionalities, uh, iterate development and fix bugs. And um, yeah, we invite everybody to be an active better user. So if you watch the recording here, customize a personal profile, customize your community profile, invite your team, invite your peers, 
um, and use the functionalities. This is not a perfect platform. It's a better product. It has bugs, it has issues, but it's fun to develop it together. Um, and it's a quite uh, purposeful thing that we're working here on. Next slide, please. Yes, and um, we have introduced this internally already uh, um, to introduce it to Hans, who is actually also, I think, our closest beta user. Uh, you have been with us for a while. So we set up a badge on the ARC. It's ARC Mentor. And the ARC Mentor role means that you are a power user. So you know about the functionalities. We have a, a short training for this. It lasts maybe one to two hours, can be done remotely. And it empowers you to uh, set up communities and set up uh, activities. That those are the two main functionalities. Everything else is learned uh, on the go, but basically you can really uh, start in Switzerland or wherever you are to approach people or people approach you because they will see that you are ARC mentor and you can set up communities. And this also means that you are the filter because currently we have no other filter. It's us, ARC mentors, deciding what are appropriate communities. Uh, this filter will be substituted in the future through the rating system, but now we do it uh, personally. Um, and yeah, Hans, I mean, taking a bit, uh, talking a bit uh, preliminary about what you already asked in the beginning. This is what I invite you to, to become an ARC mentor. 